When I grew up, we had a way of settling arguments. It was called the den. No, really, it was the den. That was where all the dictionaries and encyclopedias were stored. If we had a disagreement about some point of fact, we went to the den and got out the World Book Encyclopedia or Webster's Dictionary, which settled all disputes. When I went to Bible college and would come home to my mom's, we settled our disputes a different way, dueling dictionaries. My mom had her tried and true Webster's and I had my brand new linguist approved American Heritage Dictionary. But even then, sometimes we disagreed. So what? She had her sources and I had mine. She was still my mom, and I was still her son. Neither of us suddenly became a bad person because we did not agree. We just disagreed, and we agreed to disagree. Sometimes I think we Christians need to learn the fine art of disagreeing agreeably. Willing to hear my perspective on this? Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. When I was ordained a minister back in 1987, I belonged to one of many churches that had these mottos. Where the Bible speaks, we speak. Where the Bible is silent, we are silent. And in essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. And in all things, charity. Did it always work that way? Are you kidding? We're still human, even with the highest ideals, but at least it was an ideal. There are some scriptures that bear on this. Go ahead, pause, get out your Bible, and follow with me on this. It's important enough for you to take that step. Then start again, and we can go over these scriptures together. Let's start out with a really divisive topic, the Sabbath and other holy days. God spoke this through Paul in Romans 14, verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. You mean God doesn't mind if we disagree as Christians on what to do with holy days? Yes! God doesn't mind. He wants us to be faithful and consistent and fully persuaded in our own minds. He actually allows us that. Isn't that amazing? Note that God didn't say don't esteem any days. He just didn't say which or whether it could be all of them. I've met people like that. Every day is a blessing and a day to praise and serve the Lord. Now look at Ephesians 4, verse 32. It's the last verse of the chapter. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Notice it doesn't say be cruel to one another, hard-hearted, unforgiving toward one another, does it? And that wouldn't work well with Romans 12.10. So go back to Romans Chapter 12, verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Look, there are places in the Bible that are totally clear. Then there are the places that are way, way less clear. Why? Because God did not choose to make it clear. He could have, but he didn't. On those things, you might be right. I might be right. We might both be partly right, or we might both be wrong. We may not have enough information to plumb all the depths of those scriptures or even of that doctrine. God lets us trust him on the things we do not understand. There's nothing wrong with that. The yardstick to Christ's kingdom is faith, not perfect understanding. He'll grant that to us in the next life, but not this one. All right, in the middle of another divisive issue. 
eating food that has been sacrificed to idols? Paul makes a clear statement about our knowledge. Remember, food is food, and an idol is nothing. Uh, go right now to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. That's in 8.4, uh, when it says there is uh, an idol is nothing. We know that an idol is nothing in the world. All they did was sacrifice food to an idol, cooking or searing or boiling the meat. So they sold it to the public at a discount price since it was already cooked. This is a difficult issue, but God had Paul's side on whether there were people around who would be tempted to get back into idol worship if they knew where you got the meat. If they're weak, don't set them up. Just like if they're former drunkards, don't set wine at their dinner table. Anyway, God had Paul write this, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. We pray, we read our Bibles, we do our best to follow Christ, but we do not know everything, nor do we know everything completely. God set it up that way. We are not to judge our brother's or sister's salvation by how well they've mastered lesser doctrines. Romans 14, 10 to 12. Back to Romans. Verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So, brothers and sisters, lighten up. You don't know everything, and neither do I. God has room for a measure of disagreement with a few simple requirements. Number one, we need God's words. God's preserved words in English is the King James Bible. Number two, we need to choose to believe what God said over any man, woman, or child. Three, we need to agree that any theory about what God has not clearly said is just that, a theory. Four, we have to allow for other blood-bought Bible believers the same leeway as God gave to us. And sometimes that means we will not agree. We will simply agree to disagree. And that is okay. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.